Hey everybody and welcome back to my channel. I know it has been a while and I apologize. Life has gotten the best of me again, but um, life's busy, I'm busy, kids are busy, so that's good. Everybody's good, everyone's happy, everyone's healthy, I can't complain, but I owe you guys a tutorial. So, without any further ado, we need to get into something. Um, to prep my face today, I have my skincare on. I'm gonna go into a little bit of No Pore Blum from Touch and Soul. Um, pores have just been crazy lately. I don't know if it's the change in weather, if it's hormonal, but my face feels crazy. It's probably because with work, I'm wearing so much more makeup now um, because I'm basically like full beat five days a week and even when I don't wear like a full on face, it's just like constant product, makeup, in my pores, on my face, all over my skin. Um, today is just a get ready chit chatty type video. We're gonna do a kind of fun glittery look. So a glitter glam, if you will, with some Stila and some Jaclyn Hill. Morphe, um, yeah, that's kind of what I had in the in the plans for today. I kind of wing it a lot, guys. I don't like sit down and write it out. I know I'm like the worst, probably the worst YouTuber ever. Um, I just wing it. <laughs> but anyway, um, my skin feels good. It feels nice and bouncy and raring to go. Um, I received a sample of. Tinny Dole, this is 380W. Now, um, Tinny Dole released new shades, so there's really a wide variety of colors now, which is great, but it's still, to me, one of the most tricky makeup lines to find your shade in. Like, you really have to work with a specialist who knows the product line, who knows the differences with the colors. I mean, you can look at those charts that they give you sometimes, but I feel like they never really are super accurate. But anyway, this is a warm undertone 380W. And I can pull either way. I tend to be a little bit more on the golden warm side because I have a lot of yellow, but I'm not super yellow. There's still some neutral in there. So I'm gonna mix this with some Laura Mercier. Um, let's see what color I have here. I have the Flawless Fusion Ultra Wear in cashew which is 2n1 and cashew is probably one of my favorite colors however it is a little light because I'm still kind of coming down off that summer skin um, so by mixing these two I'm hoping I'll get a nice neutral yellow base foundations can be so tricky sometimes you guys but Believe me when I say when you find something, even if it means mixing, just do it. So I'm gonna pop this on my Morphe sponge with a little spritz. I saw Jaclyn Hill do this, and I really like the way her foundation came out. So I'm gonna give it a whirl because I feel like I have so much texture going on lately with my pores just being so like out of control. And I am just wanna give something also shot see if it like applies it better it's looking a little closer not bad if you guys hear noises in the background my kiddo is sitting with me on his tablet um, okay so concealer I want to go in with uh, my Tarte Shape Tape this is in fair neutral which is pretty light but um, I don't know, I just feel like when it's not super light like this, I don't get that brightness under my eyes that I want. Some people don't like it super bright because they don't want it to show on camera that way. And I get that. And I just feel like this is what works best for me. I'm gonna do the same thing with the sponge. Just give it a little spritz. Make sure it's not super wet. And come in and start working 
this concealer in and blending it out. All right, to set today, I'm using Huda Beauty's um, Easy Bake and Cupcake. I've been using Derma Blend a lot lately because I don't know, I just go back and forth with my powders and I love this loose setting powder, but it's getting low. So I'm like, oh my God, I can't, I don't want to replenish it yet because your bitch needs money. So we're going to use my Huda Beauty instead and pop that on. I do love this powder too. I know like there's a lot of controversy around it, you guys. I'm not buying into it. I don't want to fight. This is not a place for fighting. I just really love the quality of this powder and the texture. Um, yeah, it just works really, really well for me. I don't know about you guys, but I like it. I know like a lot of people don't like the smell, but I personally like that kind of fragrancy bougie-ness that it has. And this is on a Real Technique sponge, which I really like for setting um, along with my Morphe. I feel like they're both really good for setting and just smoothing out the skin. So I'm just kind of like rolling and pressing this powder in to the areas that I'm not baking. Um, and the reason I tap it out and roll it so much is because I want it to really blend. I don't want it to have a brightened kind of cast. Like when, when you bake, you can kind of get that brightness. Um, I do this so that it'll set, but it'll also not give me any type of flashback. The Charlotte Tilbury um, Airbrush Flawless Finish is one that I use to finish a lot. Um, NYX No Filter Powder, which is obviously much more affordable. Um, MAC Studio Powders, I mean, try to look for stuff that doesn't have your SPF in it and things of that nature, but um, a good finisher is gonna really help prevent flashback. Yeah. So anyway, I did this look the other day, I was at work. I inspired myself, okay? <laughs> no. um, I just really liked the way it came out. I got some really cool feedback from people. But anyway, long story short, I created a look using the uh, Morphe palette here, Jaclyn Hill. And um, it was a pretty softer look for me, I'm not gonna lie, because usually when I go in and I do a lot of color, I tend to, you know, really like, kind of drag it up a bit, but um, I don't know, it was, a, it was a softer look, I guess soft glam, because it's still very glam, but it was a softer glam, and I got some really nice feedback on it. So I wanted to kind of recreate it for you guys today. Um, really quickly, I went into the wrong color. I wanna go into these two soft colors, and I should know them. I had a, a little sheet that told me what each color was. I don't remember, so sorry guys, but basically the two frostier white shades i like to go in right in the corner here right up under the brow bone and then just kind of pull whatever is left onto the lid to really prep and prime this lid all right now using a different blending brush i'm going to go into these two mid-tone browns here and one's kind of neutral one's a little more pinky and I think it's right above pukey. I think that's the color that Jacqueline always like uses. But um, we're gonna take this into the crease, nice and soft, and I'm really kind of coming in and circling and buffing, and I'm gonna take it on the outside corner as well. So I want this to have a really kind of blown out, smoky look. Using this same brush, I'm gonna come down now into the second row, right next to this orange color. There's like a warm brown here. And I'm gonna start working that the same way, real fluffy into the crease, into the outside corner. Now I'm gonna drop into a Morphe B81, which is a different type of brush. It's hard to explain. It is definitely fluffier, definitely crease-based, but it's very dense and it has like a goat hair um, finish. I mean, not, maybe not even a goat hair, but it's I don't. It's different. It's it's a little stiffer, a little more stiff. 
than the others. Yeah, can't really think of my words right now. Anyway, um, in doing that, I'm gonna go back into this color here, and I'm also gonna pick up this more pinky dark brown. And I'm actually gonna blend them on my hand first. I really wanna push the color into the bristles, tap out the excess, and in the same fashion, just coming in right into this kind of outside V here, and just circling and circling this color in three quarters of the way on the lid here. I'm leaving this area open because I want that to be lighter, sheer. Now, I want to drop down into the third row and on the end here is this other like almost like coppery pink brown. I can't explain it. It's a really, really pretty brown. Maybe no, scratch that, not copper like a mauve brown. It has some warmth, but it has some cool. I'm taking this on a very small fluffy brush and working this into the outside crease here, into the crease, into the corner. I'm keeping this really tight and tapered, but this is a really soft brush, so it's not doing super harsh placement. So get something small and fluffy, but not super dense because you don't wanna add just a punch of color. You wanna really just blend and blend and blend this in. Sticking with the mauves, there's a really pretty um, milk chocolate color here that's almost like a mauve milk chocolate. And I think I wanna add just a little bit of that into this look. And I'm going to kind of push the color off the bristles and circle it and push it back in so that this way, like I said, there's not a whole lot of fallout. And we're just gonna keep going in the same motion so that this way the majority of our color is on the outside and on the inside it's just softer but still defined. Now I'm gonna go back into a fluffy brush and we're gonna go back into that first row Grab this color, a pop of that one. And now, tapping some of that off, we're gonna reverse and go from the inside corner here and blend out. And back on the other side as well. Okay guys, so now that we have a lot of like neutrally warmish, rosy, mauvey tones, I wanna kind of pick up on that vibe. And on the top level here, top row, we have all these really pretty kind of frosted pink tones. So I actually want to take a little bit of this first one and the second one, grab them on my finger, and I'm going to start pressing them into the lid, starting in the center and kind of working my way forward. So again, it's those first two colors here next to these kind of transition mid-tone colors and we're pressing it in working it into the front a little bit now I also want to keep it a little bit cooler too so I'm going to go into this kind of like champagne movie color and I want to pop that in the front so I'm going to grab a Morphe G15 and I'm gonna go back into those pinks and that champagne and kind of mix them together and just press them very gently into the lid. Now, using my ring finger, I'm gonna go back into, um, let's see here, this third row. And there's this really pretty kind of rich, warm, brownish, shimmer it's almost like a movie warm brown and i want to kind of tap a little bit out but i'm going to place that onto the outside corner with my finger just to add a little dimension to the lid and then going back into our flat brush here i want to now grab some glitter so i'm going to go into let's see kitten karma from the glitter and glow stila collection and i'm going to take that actually on my flat shader brush here and I'm going to work this on the inside corner so I want to keep this fairly close to the front 
so that we keep that dark little patch that we have on the outside corner. And just kind of glitter and glow, if you will, that inside corner. So you get that nice little pop of shimmer. And then what I always do is kind of gently pull it into the crease, the glitter. So now when you look down, when you look away, you have this little pop of shimmer, but you have these gorgeous like champagne -y rose colors. And I'm gonna leave my eyes alone just so that they can kind of set. I wanna come in and dust away some of this bake and any type of fallout. So I'm gonna grab this um, sh like kind of, uh, what do you call it, like a defining brush or a soft powder brush. And I'm gonna come in and just dust away any fallout and any remaining powder. Also, since we're doing a get ready with me, um, and you guys probably know my routine really quick, I just wanna say I will be putting the colors that I've placed in my crease on the lower lash line, but I'm not gonna go step by step because I wanna chat with you a little. But anyway, speaking of palettes and disappointments, I love Huda Beauty palettes. I've um, I've got the Desert Dusk. I've got a bunch of mini palettes, and I really do like it because I like a lot of her products. But I went in to use my Desert Dusk. I think it was yesterday or the day before, and I was so disappointed. I had to actually go in and like scrape down some of the pans because the shadows had dried out so badly that they were just like, it was just like air. I was trying to put them on my brush to put them on my eyes. And then I tried rubbing it in with my finger just to see if that would like work into the pan and heat it up a little bit. No, I actually had to shave off a layer of powder so that I could get it to warm up and like, you know, kind of crack it a little, make it loose shave off a little bit and then repressed it into the pan, if you will, just to get some some color. And I was just like, oh my goodness. Like, I was so disappointed. I love this. And I'm just gonna show you guys because I have it here. But um, it was these like lighter frosted colors. Like I actually went in and oh, it just makes me cringe. I had to like scratch at them break off a layer to actually be able to get in and feel that kind of softer, more pliable shadow. But I was like, what in the, and it's not even that old, the palette. I've had it like a decent amount of time to where I can still get away with it and use it for a bit. But, but I, I mean, I can't, I can't because it just wasn't working. I had to actually shave it down. And I was so disappointed by that. And I was like, oh my God, like I spent a lot, what are they, like $65 those palettes? Like you spend a lot of money, you expect, you know, quality. And I don't know if like, I know it happens a lot. I don't know if I got a bad batch, if I maybe like it was left open one day and I just don't recall and it like, it got air in it and then it created, you know, dryness. I don't really know but I was disappointed. I'm always on a budget. I buy all my stuff. I don't have PR. So I take pride in knowing that I spent the money on everything. So it's hard when you spend money and then something like that happens where the palette is just getting kind of like, not junky, but just to the point where I might not be able to use it, you know? And then boom, there goes my money. But call me cheap, I guess. Some girls just, drop thousands on makeup. I don't have that luxury, so. All right, you guys, that is all set and done. I'm just gonna cut the corner a little bit sharper here. Just while we work on the rest of our face. I'm covered in powder now. All right, so I wanna start contouring, and to do that, I'm actually going to mix a little bit of my Morphe um, 9C Contour Palette, and I have a smaller 
Smashbox palette here. This is the step-by-step -step contour palette. And I'm just gonna kind of work with different shades because I have hit pan practically on these few shades here. So I'm gonna kind of mix these together to create a contour shade that I like. I'm gonna grab this contour shade here and this bronze shade, mix the two together. Then I'm gonna go into my Morphe palette and also mix a few shades with those two. I know, right? I like really customizing it and then coming in I go about three quarters of the way down and then I'm gonna start really circling the product <laughs> and then pushing the product upwards. So it's going into the crease in the hollow, but we're kind of pushing the product up so that it's lifting the face as opposed to pulling the face down. Okay, so contour is on and um, Really quickly, I wanna warm up a little bit in bronze. And Physicians Formula Butter Bronzer, you guys know, is my jam. And they released some deeper shades. This one is a sun-kissed bronzer. So I think it's a little bit different, a little bit deeper. And I'll show you what's left of my original. I feel like they're both pretty close in color. This one has a little bit more warmth. So I kind of like mixing the two to get a little bit of that terracotta glow with a little bit more of a bronzy glow. And we're gonna work these now above where we placed our contour just to give warmth. And then of course onto the jawline where the sun kind of naturally hits. And I'm just really like gently moving this on the face. I know it looks like I'm going to town and like pressing, but I'm actually really not pressing hard at all. I'm just grazing this to give it a really nice kind of natural sun-kissed warmth and glow to the skin. And I love this um, butter bronzer because I feel like it does have that warmth and that glow. It's a very creamy powder. All right. Bronzer is on and set. Now I need to pick out a blush color. And I've been, again, working with my 10 color palette from BH a lot because I came across it. I figured it's time to use it. I don't want it to go bad. Um, I use it, I was using it quite a bit for other people, but now I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna play for myself. So I bought a new one for a client and now I've been working with these. And again, we have really pretty mauve so I wanna keep it kind of soft, working with this like earthy brown and mixing these mauve tones with a pop of that pink and I'm gonna blend it and push the product into the back of my hand first and then start working it in. And this is just a small little travel size MAC brush, but it's small and dainty and fluffy and I think it works great for when you're mixing colors because it works the colors in really soft and subtly Just kind of working it into the apple, bringing it up a little bit on the cheekbone, a little into the temple here, across the bridge of the nose. And then again, you have these like more mauve undertones in those first few colors. You can even work those into your contour a little bit just to add some fullness to the cheeks. So I'm gonna go in with my Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush um, Flawless Finish. This is in shade two and grab that Morphe sponge again. And I'm just gonna hit that on the bottom of this and just work this under my eyes just to set, like I was saying earlier in regards to flashback. This is giving it that kind of final finish and helping to tone down any possible flashback that we can get from setting our eyes and baking. And I also bring it into my forehead a little bit and down the bridge of my nose, a little bit on the chin, just to give a final set to everything and to make sure that, again, there's no flashback. And in return, you find that this also brightens a little bit, especially if you have a powder that is a shade lighter than your skin tone, um, because it'll help to just brighten without that flashback 
crazy effect that we tend to get sometimes. All right, really quickly, I'm gonna go ahead and do my brows. I'm actually gonna do these off camera to save a little time. And um, I'm gonna do some eyeliner as well. But for brows today, I'm gonna be working with my ColourPop Skinny Brow Pencil and also a little bit of NYX um, Micro Tip Brow Pencil. Um, I like the two brushes and the two points on these, really, really nice. And I like the difference in tone. One's very dark and cool, the other one's a little bit warmer, so in return it gives you more of a neutral colored brow. And then for eyeliners today, I'm gonna be using my trusty Maybelline. Um, this is the Master Precise All Day Liquid Liner. Really nice, sharp point, super, there goes my dog. Super affordable. I'll be back and we'll finish the look together. Okay guys, so the barking's over. <laughs> I have my liner on, I have my brows. Um, I do wanna actually gel them, so I'm gonna use my NYX Control Freak Brow Gel um, just to kind of lock them in place a little bit. And I like them to kind of be a little more feathery and long at the same time. Now some days my brows are like so bomb and then other days I just cannot get it together. And today's like one of those days where I feel like, eh. I look a little like in shock with my brows, but it's all right, we'll make it work. We're just gonna make it work. <laughs> little over the top today but anyway I prepped my lashes because I actually want to try um, some lashes that I received from um, a company called lash me up and uh, you've seen them before um, a while ago they had reached out to me about um, trying some product they gave me something like really affordable and just seeing how it goes and I did like them um, I've since tried other companies like House of Lashes and Lily Lashes. Lily right now is hands down my favorite, but I figured let's give it a whirl, try something else. And these are Lash Me Up Burlesque and they come in these cute little packages. Um, and it says, a girl is not complete without her lashes. Follow them at, at Lash Me Up underscore. And then of course your you know typical lash packaging. But um, these are really pretty and long and they're a little bit feathery so hopefully they will work I trimmed them down down a little bit because I felt like they were definitely um, really long for me the only thing I'm finding is that I don't I feel like they're a little uneven as far as like the density um, so I don't know what that's about but let me just trim this one a little bit more Okay, so this already feels better than it did yesterday. Yesterday, I just felt like they were super duper long. Um, I have a long eye, but they're not incredibly almond. Like some people have legit beautiful almond eyes and I feel like mine are a little more rounded and hooded. So I think the trick was really just trimming these lashes down because they're beautiful and they're super long in length too. Um, but I was just like hitting every little thing, felt like they were falling off and I just wasn't having it. But this feels better. I am loving this. Very pretty. See how it holds up at Target. <laughs> it's my day off. We are filming and we are going to Target and stocking up on groceries that I will probably not even cook tonight because that's just how I am. I don't know about you guys, but um, I'll literally go out and buy groceries and be like, yeah, I'm gonna make a roast and potatoes and all this stuff. And then by the time we get back from there, my kids are like, mom, we're hungry. I'm like, you want pizza? Let's get pizza. Salad and pizza for everyone. <laughs> bad I know anyway I'm gonna line my lips with my favorite lip liner from Laura Mercier this is hazelnut tea and um, recently I discovered beauty by pop sugar which I really love this is a sweet sticks and it's a satin matte lip color called stay in bed um, awesome little packaging crayon style these are um, vegan based which I think is great um, cruelty free 
you have really great naturally sourced sustainable ingredients that create these products there's no parabens mineral oil um, I don't know if I'm saying it right, thiolates, but thiolates, um, silicones, just like really, really great, healthy, natural stuff. Um, green tea extract, mango seed butter, hibiscus flower extract. There's just so many good things. Blueberry oil, I believe, is in it. So um, obviously check ingredients because, you know, if you're allergic, you're allergic. What are you going to do? But um, I really, really love these. They last really good on the lips. Um, I like to line my lip then put this on with a little pop of gloss, but they smell amazing and they're hydrating and soothing because usually when you think of a matte lip color, you just think, okay, it's going to dry out. I'm going to get that ashy, crazy look that I have right now going on because I just saw concealer all over my lips and I'm a mess. But anyway, this will not do that to you before my lips get any worse. Let's go ahead and put some lip color on. So I'm feathering in right now with my lip liner and um, I like to kind of come in with a brush and just smooth it. It's so hard to like do your lips and talk at the same time. But long story short, I like to come in and smooth it out a little bit before I place on my lipstick so that this way it has a nice foundation to work with. Also putting on like a lip balm while you're talking. Um, Beauty by Pop Sugar has an incredible um, lip balm. I think it's called Lip Save. And they have a really awesome sugar scrub for your lips. So I really recommend that. Um, again, I'm not, you know, that's not paid PR. I'm not telling you to do that. They just have some really awesome products for lips and I think that you know anytime you can get stuff that just exfoliates and hydrates it's super important is because if you're like me and you wear lip color every day it takes a toll on the lips um so yeah definitely love this um I just like to come in with my lip liner and kind of work that as a base I feel like it makes the lipsticks last longer and whether it's this lipstick or the next, I feel like it adds to the longevity because the less touch-ups that I have to do personally during the day, the happier I know I am. Um, so that's just my thing. They also have like a la uh, liquid lipstick that's like a satin lipstick and almost like a velvety finish. And those are really, really good too. Super high pigment. Um, a nice shade of colors. Oh, they smell so good. Um, this is now ColourPop's Charming Lip Gloss. I'm just going to top it off. These three have been like my favorite lip combo lately. Um, really quickly before we finish this look, we need to spritz our face. Everything is coming together. Let's do a little MAC Fix Plus. Okay guys, so we are almost done. I totally forgot I need a little glow because this look was all about glitter and glow. So I'm gonna hop into my BH Spotlight Highlight and I'm gonna grab a little bit of Ethereal and a little bit of Allure. Both are fun, bright, cool undertones. And we're gonna just go to town right now. Work this in. because I need to glimmer and glow, don't you know? So let us recap. Okay, let's recap. <laughs> so going back to the Jaclyn Hill technique with this sponge, which mine does not look as pretty as hers. I need a new one. Gonna do that today probably. Um, but anyway, using the Morphe sponge, keeping it dampened, putting a little extra spritz, working the foundation in, I give that a super thumbs up. Way to go, Jaclyn Hill. You nailed it on that one. Um, I love the finish. I have texture in my skin, but I don't feel super duper up close, tech pixelated, gross. Like I feel like everything looks a lot smoother, especially with such long wear 
skin hugging foundation because I use Flawless Fusion and Tinny Dole. Both, like I said, very tight on the skin. And I do have wrinkles throughout here, throughout around my mouth. You know, I'm in my 30s now, so things change. Gravity is a you know what. And so to know that I can use that technique and get a flawless finish makes me feel really good. Um, let's look into these lashes again by Lash Me Up. They feel super duper awesome, comfortable. I cut them down more true to size. And these were the burlesque lashes. So those get a thumbs up from me as well. And again, this look was inspired by something that I had worn similar when I was working um, just this past week. And um, I got some really nice feedback because it's just a softer glam. We did do a lot of steps, but it doesn't look like a whole lot on the eyes. And I think the subtlety of the shimmer, of course, the thick black line that I am known for, and the glossy natural lips, again, Beauty by Pop Sugar, um, my Laura Mercier that I love, and just a pop of gloss. And I think it really brings the look together because it's super sexy, super glowy. You can wear it to Time, you could wear it nighttime you could even amp it up and smoke out the lower lash line to take it into like a true evening look but I hope that you guys enjoyed this get ready with me this little chit chat this life update and um, I will link product information down below again there is a link for Lily lashes because you guys know your girl loves them so much right now um, and yeah until next time, um, take care, guys, and I'll see you really soon.